We're, we're um, starting a new Mishnah tonight, uh, here in the Shabbat, um, uh, the fourth, finishing the fourth critic, page 51a. The issue we're dealing with is insulation, uh, taking hot food and insulating it on Shabbat. Now, obviously, you can't, you can't cook on Shabbat, but we're talking about something that was cooked already, but you want to keep it hot. So one way they did that in the ancient times, and still we use thermoses today, but they used it even more back then, is to put insulation. Um, now, the type of insulation that will add more heat, there's some things uh, that might have, have some kind of chemical reaction that will actually increase the temperature. Those are never allowed. We're talking about things like just stuffing wool or cotton or hay. You put it around it, and then it will stay hot. The rabbi said that um, even though it's not adding any heat and not really cooking it, you can't do that on Shabbat. You can't put something in a thermos on Shabbat itself. The reason is because if you do that, then you may come to want to warm it up first before you insulate it, which makes sense. You want to make sure it's as hot as possible, and then you insulate it. And you're going to warm it up by putting it into an oven. If you put it into an oven, you're going to might, you might stoke the coals. And so um, they don't want any of that. So therefore, if you are going to insulate it, make sure it's insulated from before Shabbat. On Friday afternoon, you put insulation all around it and on top, and then you can leave it there uh, into Shabbat, and then you can take it out. And uh, furthermore, once it's insulated before Shabbat, and then you can take it out and even put it back in on Shabbat. We're giving intro that you know already. And uh, okay. So here we start a Mishnah. It's like New Jersey Transit. You know, you have an extra minute because uh, it leaves at the end of the minute, right? Uh, but if you come yes, at the yes. end of the minute in this class, you might miss something. Okay. Yes, um, yes. okay. Uh, so uh, if you did not cover the pot uh, from the previous day, then uh, you cannot cover it on Friday night after it gets dark. It's too late, as, as we just said. However, if you covered it from before, and then it became uncovered, and then you can cover it again. And the language here sounds like even, by, even if it's by mistake, but actually even on purpose, if you uncovered it, took food out, you can cover it again because you already had it from before. And next halacha is memale et akiton, if you want to fill up a jug of cold water and you put it under a pillow or a cushion to keep it cold. So this is insulation, not for hot, but for cold, that is allowed. And that makes sense that that should be allowed because it's cold. So there's no chance you're going to come to put it in the oven to heat it up, right? I mean, they didn't have refrigerators that they're going to put it in there either. Um, I guess the cold water they might have gotten from a, from a cistern or something that's a big body of water that's colder than it was outside. But under a pillow, it stays cold. Okay, that's the basic. Uh, that's the basic information we need. And now, Gemara will discuss it further. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shemuel. So Rav Yehuda is the second generation Amora in Bavel. In the name of his teacher, Shemuel, the first generation Amora, who says, "Mutar let min let let min atatzonen." You are allowed to uh, insulate something that's cold to keep it cold. Well, you already have a question on this. You just said that in the Mishnah. Why do I need Amorah to tell me exactly what you just said in the Mishnah? Amar of Yosef, my kamash ma'lan, tenena, mimale adam kiton, venoten tachatakar, o tachatakin hakeset. What are you teaching us, Shemuel? That you said the same thing as the Mishnah. I know that I'm allowed to insulate something for cold. Amar le'e abaye, tuva kamash ma'lan, di'imi matnitim, no, he's adding something new, even though it's the exact same words. Which, if I had only the Mishnah, I might think, you know what kind of thing I'm allowed to insulate for cold? Something that I only eat cold, that I would never insulate for hot. For example, ice cream. Not that they had ice cream back then but other things, right? So ice cream, I'm going to insulate for cold and only for beer, right? Um, and so there's no chance I'm ever going to come to take this item and insulate it into something hot on Shabbat, and then that, that could be a problem. Um, so that's why, uh, that's what I would have thought. But now Shemuel's statement comes to say, you know, even something else, like let's say coffee. Uh, I have iced coffee. I want to keep it cold. I'm allowed to insulate it, even though I might at another time insulate hot coffee. And if I insulate hot, cold coffee, I might come to insulate hot coffee and so on. But we don't worry about that. 
insulating anything in cold is okay. And so Shemuel's statement comes to add that to us. Okay, is this really the Peshat of Shemuel's statement? I'm not sure. He really doesn't say anything. It could have been a little bit more explicit if that's really what he meant. Perhaps um, Shemuel simply repeating something in the Mishnah. Um, okay, but anyway, we, uh, 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 now that we have that, we get to learn an extra halacha. Okay, next statement is Amar Rav Huna. In the printed edition, it says Amar Rav, but actually has to be Amar Rabi. So Rav Huna, Rav Huna often says things in the name of Rav, but here it wouldn't make sense. So Rav Huna says in the name of Rabi. Rabi is Rabi Udahanasi, the author of the Mishnah. And he said, Asur lehet min et hasonen. You are not allowed to, uh, to, to uh, 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 put in a thermos something, insulate something, even cold. Because it goes against the Mishnah, it goes against what Shemuel just said. And so we ask, We have another Baraita that says specifically that the B, the B Udanasi, besides what we just said in the Mishnah, he said you are allowed to, um, to insulate something cold. So now we have a contradiction, two traditions about what the B said. No, it, it's no contradiction. One is before he heard a tradition from this master, uh, the Bishmael, and one's after he heard. What did he hear from that master? He had the Atib Rabbi Ve'amad. Asur l'atmin et hasonen. Amad l'fanav Rabbi Ishmael Be'rabi Yoseh. Abba hitil l'atmin et hasonen. Amad kibar horazaken. One time, the uh, bee was sitting, and he was he said this halakha, you're not allowed to insulate something cold. And he's sitting before the B. Ishmael, who was uh, who, uh, Yose, who was a contemporary of his. But his contemporary B. Ishmael said, my father, his father is Rabbi Yose, said that you are allowed to insulate cold things. And once the B. Udan, as he heard that, he said, the elder has ruled, right? Rabbi Yose, I defer to him, he's a great sage. And he changed his mind. And from then on, he said, you are allowed to uh, insulate in something cold. And so when uh, Rav Huna said his original statement that you're not allowed, then he's reflecting an old statement, the old version, before he changed his mind, before he realized he was, uh, that the elder already said a different halakha. Okay, so uh, in this way, we're able to harmonize everything. And if you'd ask Rav Huna now, you'd, Rav Huna would say, oh yeah, I was, I was saying, quoting something old. You gotta you know, forget that he changed his mind. Um, all right, we could go on, but this is something really interesting here because Rav Huna, a second generation Amora, he, uh, he, he was born only a few years before the Biudanasi died. So if the Biudanasi, in fact, changed his mind, Rav Huna would have known about it and he would not have continued to teach a tradition that reflected the, B, the B's old opinion. He would have updated it to the new opinion. So there's something, there's something not quite right here regarding the Pesha. And I think instead we can suggest as follows that when it says about what, uh, when the bee was sitting and the bee said and the bee was, the said, "Oh, my father said this," and he said, "About what as I can," is does that clearly indicate that he changed his mind, or is he just saying, "Oh, that's a great sage. Okay, he, you know, those who follow his opinion can follow it, right?" And you know, I, I agree that that is a uh, a possible approach, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he changed his mind. And so it seems that Rav Huna's understanding is that um, the Biodanasi did not permit insulating something in cold. One day he was sitting with his colleague, uh, the B. Uh, Yishmael. His colleague said, my father said it is allowed. So as, as a difference to be nice, he said, oh, the, the, uh, the elder has spoken. Okay, you know, very nice. And he never really changed his mind. And Rav Huna continued to teach that the B said it's not allowed. There is, however, another Baranka, right? This is reflected also in our Mishnah. I thought that when it says Horaz Aken, it meant he did change his mind. And so that's why it said, and that, according to that, that the B permitted it. So we have uh, probably one story, which is this story here about uh, the B Ishmael, and Horaz uh, Aken was interpreted in two different ways. And that's what results from these two different t- traditions about what he said. In any case, the Babli harmonizes it into one. And so now everybody agrees that one is allowed to, um, to do that. Now we have a nice little story, a side point. Look how, how, look how um, these sages loved each other so much. The Biyoseh was older, he was from a previous generation. 
but when he, if he was alive, he would sit and, at, at the feet of the Biudan Nasi, because the Biudan Nasi was the patriarch, he was the official, uh, officially in charge of the Jewish community, and so the Biyose would defer to his younger colleague. That's how much the Biyose loved him. How do we know that? Because Rabbi Ishmael be Rabbi Yosef memalem mekom avotav haba bekafu for Rabbi Yosef lifnei Rabbi. Because Rabbi Ishmael, his son, was at the same status as his father. He fulfilled his, his father's role, and Rabbi Ishmael sat under and gave respect to the Biudanasi. Yet, even though, um, even though both these sages, father and son, gave respect to the Biudanasi, still the Biudanasi says kevad horaz haken. He treats the Biyose in turn with great respect, calling him a great elder, saying, oh, if you said that, then you must be right, and I would agree with you. So you see how the rabbis um, respected each other so greatly, and that's a wonderful model. Did we see this story elsewhere? Yes. Um, I don't know. I, um, Not the first time we came across this story. We came across it. Um, I don't know. I'll check. I'll, I'll check after. Okay. Uh, Rav Nachman, Nachman had a slave, a Jewish slave, and he told him on Shabbat, at men li sonen, uh, can you please uh, insulate some, some cold food for me? I want to keep it cold. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we're allowed to do that. We just saw. And he said something else. kapela. Bring me some water that a non-Jew had already heated up. Um, okay, so that's, that's the two things he asked for. Rabbi heard this and he got angry. He said, Rabbi how can you do that? How can you tell your servant to do these two things? And we're not sure what he was angry about. So, Amad of Yosef, my time I ikpad, he was following his own rabbis of Nachman's uh, it was second generation Amora. His two rabbis were Rabbi and Shemuel, and he was following one halacha of one and one halacha of the other, and they didn't disagree about these things. Shemuel, the Amar of Yudam, Shemuel, Mutalat Min Dasonen, Al Shemuel, who said that you're allowed to insulate cold things, so he did that. Rab, the Amar of Shemuel, Bar Rab Yisrak Amar Rab, Poshu Neichal Kemochi Hu Hai, and Bo Mishum Bishulei Goyim. Rab had a had a a, a statement, a, a teaching that anything that you could eat raw you are allowed to tell ask a non-Jew to cook for you. And that's not considered bishul akum. That's a very important halachic principle, right? Um, if you, uh, you know, eat something, uh, whether it be in your house or out, uh, out, out outside, um, that a non-Jew cook, generally bishul akum, you couldn't eat it yourself. But if it's something that you could eat raw, you know, like maybe it's carrots or something, then now that you could eat raw, but now they cooked it, it's okay. And water would be like that. Water you could have, water would not cook. But he wanted hot, hot, hot water, and so a non-Jew is allowed to heat up the hot water for you. So he didn't do anything wrong. He followed his rabbis on these two things. Who, but the Biyameh, why did he get angry? Savad Adam Hashuv Shaneh. He thought an important person, like Rav Nachman, is different. An important person should should be more machmir. He shouldn't rely on these loopholes and uh, and and, and uh, leniencies. He should always follow the strictest letter of the law. All right, so another important principle, Rabbi said, number one, respect each other, and they should be machmir on themselves, but be mekel on others. Okay, so I'm going to have to like, make life hard for everybody else, but they should set a standard. Good. Tanu Rabbanan, afapisha meru en tomnin, afilo bedavah she'eno mosif hevel mishche hashecha, imbalo sif mosif. Okay, this important principle that's taught in the Tosefta, in addition to the additional teachings that are not in the Mishnah, that says even though you can't, um, you can't insulate um, with something that adds more heat, like a dung, I guess while it's drying, and you can check if there's some kind of chemical reaction that actually produces more heat. So you can't uh, in insulate in something, even before Shabbat, with something that increases heat. However, uh, even though the Mishnah said that, um, if you wanted to add more insulation to what you'd had before, that's okay. I insulated with like one, you know, one blanket. I can add two blankets or three blankets and add more because I'm not going to then, you know, I'm not going to heat it up before I add the second blanket. So I'm not worried about that. How do you do it? 
um, you could take the sheets, let's say you just had two sheets and you're insulated, you want to make it thicker, you take off the sheets and put on the blankets, which is a fidush. Not only can you add extra layers, you can even take off the layer that you put and add more. Um, or the other way around, if it's too hot and you want it to cool down a bit, you can take off the blankets and put on sheets. While we're at it, with another teaching from Rashbag. Uh, and he further said that you, the only thing that you're not allowed to do is insulate that very pot that you cooked it in. But if you take the pot of water where you, from where you cooked it and you pour it into a second pot, like a, a kilishini, then you can insulate the second pot, right? Because uh, by pouring it from the from the original pot into another one, you're showing I don't want it to be so hot because pouring it into another one is necessarily going to cool it off. Right, the walls of the second pot are are cold, and so it's going to cool it off. So since you just cooled it off, it shows that you don't want it to be so hot. So there's no chance that you're going to come to now put it back, put it in the oven to heat it up. Right, you don't have to worry about that. And therefore, in that case, you can insulate it uh, on Shabbat. Taman vechisa v'davar hanital b'Shabbat, or Taman v'davar she'eno nital b'Shabbat, vechisa v'davar hanital b'Shabbat, hareze notel u'machzir. Okay, if you insulated and uh, covered the food with something that is not mukse, something that, is, that you are allowed to move on Shabbat, um, then right certainly you can do that again. Or, to, or if you, uh, uh, you, you insulate in something that cannot be moved, but you, the top layer is something that you can move that's not mukse, so then you can take it out and put it back in. We assume that the walls and bottom of whatever you're putting it in, the basket that you're putting in, are going to stay. And since the top part is not mukse, you take off the top, take it out, put it back in, and cover it again. That's, not, that's no problem. Taman v'chisa v'davar she'eno nital b'Shabbat. Or she taman v'davar hanital b'Shabbat v'chisa v'davar she'eno nital b'Shabbat. Im ayam migulam miklato notel umachzir ve'im lav eno notel umachzir. Okay, the key is what the top is. The topping. If the topping is something that is uh, is mukse, or certainly if the whole thing is mukse, then you have a problem. In that case, if there's a little bit of the cover sticking out, and I could just, you know, grab onto that and push off the rest uh, uh, indirectly, then that's okay. I'm allowed to do that. But if it's entirely covered with something that's mukse, then there's no way to even get at it at all. And then um, up the creek, then I, uh, my food is stuck in there. Okay. So it would seem that probably you could still you know, uh, uh, tilt the entire thing and then somehow get it off. Right, but then you wouldn't be able to return it back to its place. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Ne'oret Shel Pishtan Daka Harehi Kezebel. Fine flax is like zebel. Uh, in other words, when the flax is this thick, uh, it's okay, but very fine is very good insulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be not allowed to use because it actually uh, he heats it up or is, is such a good ins insulation, it's uh, like manure. And it's hard to hard to imagine uh, using manure to insulate your food. Um, but in that case, it's dried out, and I don't know. I guess maybe they did something with it. All right. Manichin meham al gabe meham uktera al gabe kedera. One thing that you're allowed to do is you could take an urn and put another urn on top of it. Right. The bottom one's hot. The top one's hot. You want to keep them hot. You put them uh, one on top of the other, and that's okay. Or a pot and another pot on top. You can also do that. Uh, uh, and here in the printed edition it says But this doesn't look like it's the correct the reading. It should be also, right? You could also do. And you can even uh, uh, put dough around the edges uh, of the pot cover to keep it sealed in uh, so that the steam won't go out, the heat won't get out. Not to get hot. In other words, if the top one was cold and the bottom one was hot, then the bottom one's going to make the, uh, the top one uh, uh, hot. So you can't do it if the top one is cold. As long as they're both warm, then there's no problem with it.
And just as uh, you cannot insulate something hot, so too you cannot uh, insulate uh, something cold. Well, um, that's the other opinion <laughs> we saw back there. But the B says, no, it's okay. You are allowed to insulate something cold. All right. Um, this is either going to that other opinion, or maybe it's talking about insulating something cold to make it hot. All right. Um, okay. Ben merazekin velot hasheleg velot habarad b'shabat b'shvil sheyazubu memav. Uh, this is a good practical halacha. You're not allowed to crush snow or hail on Shabbat so to make it melt faster, right? You smash it till it melts so that you can drink it. And the reason is, well, two reasons. One is because of, of uh, Molid. You're creating something new. Before there was no water, and now there's water. Um, but if that was the case, you wouldn't be allowed to drink it even if, F, F, even if you just let it melt. So it seems the problem is actually it's uh, similar to squeezing, squeezing an orange and you get juice. And so here you're kind of squeezing the snow and you get water. And so it's a similar action, and that's why it's not allowed. But what you can do is you can put it into a cup or into a dish, even if there's other stuff in it, and that way it's going to melt faster. This is a good practical halacha. You have, uh, if you have a Coca-Cola and, and you want to put ice on it on Shabbat, hopefully it's warm. It's okay. You can put the ice in, even though it's going to make the ice melt faster than it would if it was just out. That's permitted because um, you're not actively squeezing it. Uh, you're just uh, putting it in there, and it's doing it on its own. And that is the end of the Perek. Hadran Alach Bame Tomenim. Okay, Hazakim Ubruchim. We finished that Perek, but don't go away yet. Um, we have the next Perek to come. Any uh, questions? All good. Okay, great. Next perek is called Bame Behemayosa U Bame Enayosa. All right. So we have animals and then uh, uh, you want you, you they're gonna go out in public domain. So um, uh, number one, an animal is not allowed to carry uh, a burden for you, and it can't carry any burden at all in public, right? Just like you can't carry a burden, you can't have your animal carrying a burden. However, there are lots of exceptions, just like a human being can go outside with clothing on, it's not called carrying when you have clothing. So to an animal can wear things that it normally wears, uh, including like a collar or anything that it needs to, uh, for its control, for the, for the owner to control it. Okay, different animals need different levels of control. And uh, um, from my extensive uh, uh, knowledge of being a shepherd for many years, uh, I know that there are uh, different levels of what something might need. So uh, a horse, a regular, you know, a horse or something that's relatively easy to control would need a halter, which just goes around its uh, its mouth and back of the head. Um, uh, you know, you can probably picture uh, pictures of, of that. Um, but something uh, that needs something more would be a nose ring, like a camel uh, uses a nose ring. I guess it would be more painful for it when you're pulling it. And something even more harder to control would need a a, a, um, a, a bit in the mouth. Um, that would uh, that you would you would use to lead it around. So this, we're going to talk about different kinds kinds of animals and the different kinds of things that this animal needs in order to be controlled. And then the question is, um, if you put the wrong a different thing on on each animal, if you uh, put take an animal that's easy to control and put uh, and put the and put the mouth bit in it, or the other way around, you put something that's just a loose collar on something that's hard on a lion, right? Is that considered carrying? Uh, or is that considered wearing, and this is uh, still okay? All right, so that's our, our general topic. All right, so a regular camel uh, can go out, we have lots of interesting words here, uh, with, a, with a halter, right? It doesn't, it just goes, uh, uh, straps around its head. But we'll explain what these things are. Right, this alluvian uh, 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 donkey uh, can go out with uh, this uh, something that um, goes into its mouth. A sus bashed, and a horse with a, just a chain around its neck. That seems to be the least. And any any animal that typically simply has a chain, I guess like a dog, 
um, can go out with a, a chain and you can actually pull it up with your chain. That's a good halacha if you're taking your dog walking, right, carrying the leash. Well, the leash is not, the leash, the animal's okay to carry the leash, okay. Um, Mazin alehend v'toblan v'mkoman. Completely irrelevant halachot uh, 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 is that if you, if it became, if the leash became tamemet and you have to take the para aduma and sprinkle it on it, you can sprinkle it on the collar while it's the animal still wearing it. I don't know how often that came up. Um, and also, if you have to do tebila because it became tame, you can be do tebila on the animal collar or nose ring while the animal is wearing it. If the whole animal goes uh, dunking into the meat. Okay, I guess the idea is that it's part of it, and so therefore it's all together. But you still have to make sure there's space all around, so it's not a hatzisa. Okay. Um, now, my naka be hatam. Okay, what are these things? We know what a what a camel is that uh, would need a halter. But what is the second one? Uh, this is a white female camel, the a dromedary, uh, with an iron nose ring. Okay, so apparently the female camels are more difficult to control <laughs> than male camels, and so needs a nose ring. Okay, Moselle knows this, yes, <laughs> from her many years of, uh, of, uh, of walking in the desert. There you go. Hamara luba befage de farzela. And... Um, uh, a Libyan donkey uh, needs an iron halter, right? Um, okay, right, that's the third item here. These Libyan donkeys, you know, need something that's very, very strong, um, but uh, they're not as strong as the, as the white female camel. Levi, shedar zuzeh lebe hozai, lemizban le hamara luba. So the one time, a nice little story, Levi uh, sent some money to these people, he wanted to buy a Libyan donkey because he heard that they're so strong and so uh, worth, the, worth the extra money. They sent him back, not a donkey, but some barley. And the point of their, their point was, let's take a regular donkey and feed it well, feed it some good barley, and it will be as strong as a Libyan donkey. You don't have to waste your money on the Libyan donkey. All right. That's good to know. Amar Rab Yehuda Amar Shemuel Mehalifin Lifnei Rabbi Shelzo Bazo Mahu. They were discussing this in front of the Yehuda Anasi, who is the compiler of the Mishnah. He says, well, "What if you switch switch them around and you put through something that is a bigger uh, restraint than necessary or a lesser restraint than necessary on the different animals? Is that considered carrying or not?" For example. Uh, so, if you take this white female camel, um, which is, uh, you know, uh, hard, hard to, to do, hard to um, uh, uh, control, and uh, you uh, put uh, just a bit in it, um, that's no problem. Um, since it's not secure, it's not going to secure the animal, uh, so that is going to be considered carrying, because it just doesn't do anything for it. So there's no point. But But if you take a regular camel, which is uh, relatively easy to control, all it needs is a halter, but you put a nose ring on it, which is a bigger control. Right? So since this is enough, that would have been enough to do that, to do just a halter, and now you put a nose ring, is that considered carrying? Or something that is all the better, right? Then you have even more control. And so why should it be carrying? So you have something that's uh, an even, you know, even, even better uh, than that. That's the question that they're asking. It seems that, that interestingly, the Buddha Nasi does not answer the question. Now they're all sitting there, the rabbis are sitting there. And the Bishmael Bede Biyoseh, remember him? Right? Same person we had on the previous staff, which I think is so interesting because that was a previous pedic. Yeah, we have a similar story about a bee sitting there, and someone says a tradition in the name of the bee, Shabbat Rabbi Yosef, and they love each other, right? and yet it's uh, on this side of the this side of the pedic. So I think it shows, at least in this case, that probably the editors of one pedic are the same as the editors of the next pedic, and you know, there's uh, there are uh, all kinds of uh, connections that we uh, can look for between them. Anyway, he said, "Kach Amar Abazu." My father said, "Arba behemot yosod beafsad." 
uh, four animals can go out with um, with a bit, right? Sus um, and we see here one of the items. One of them is a gamal, and so that was a, a well a question doesn't really answer a question because we wanted to know what about a gamal with a hatam with a nose ring. Um, so, but the fact that he says that a gamal can go out. Uh, with an uh, with an asad with a halter, well, we know that already. So the Meotemai, why is he te teaching us? He must be telling us something more. Alav the mute gamal behatam. So is he coming to tell us that a camel has to have a halter, but not a nose ring? Right, that would be bad because it's too much. Uh, no, not necessarily. Alav the mute No, maybe his point is that only these four animals can use a halter, but not a female one. Right, because then it would not be uh, enough. His point was not to say that the gamal can't use something more, it was to say that the white donkey can't use something less. So, uh, well, we were thankful that he taught that, but it doesn't help us resolve the problems. tana, dikim the gamal, yosim ba'afsad. So we have another braita that says the Libyan donkey and the camel can go out with, uh, with this halter. Um, okay, ketana'e. Uh, n nobody really understands what this baraita is doing here. It doesn't answer the question. Uh, so that's gonna, that requires a lot more research to figure that out. All right, ketana'e. There might be a machok ketana'im, this question, if it has a, a even even higher level uh, than it needs. And hayayos a besugal. An animal, a wild animal, um, cannot go out with just a collar. But Hananya Omer Yosa Besugad, Behold Avada Mishtamer, he says that it can go out with the collar and anything that will secure it. Okay, so Machloke, now Bemais Kinan, what is this case that we're talking about? Elamabe Haya Gedolami Sagila Sugad, talking about a lion, but is a collar going to be enough? Elabe Haya Ketana, if it's just like a little, uh, um, you know, rodent uh, a thing, Mi Sagila Sugad, and isn't a uh, a, a collar enough for it, so then what would be the problem according to the, according to the first opinion? Um, or according to Hananya. So, you know, either it's a big animal or a small animal, and if it's a small animal, the collar is good. If it's a big animal, the collar is bad. So, what case might they be actually arguing about? El Alav, Hatuli Kabenai, we're talking about a cat. Tana Kamasa, Varkevan de Sagila, Be Mitna, Be Alma, Masoi Hu. The first one says, this is a quantum at a rope, like a, a collar. But you don't need for a cat, you just need a little, a little string, right? You don't need a big, you don't need a big collar. And so the first opinion says, here, this one, um, mm -hmm. it can't go out because it's too big. A collar is too big for a cat. And this would, according to that opinion, you can't have something that's uh, that's um, that's uh, more than necessary, is considered carrying. But the second opinion, Khananya, who says it's allowed, says, um, it's okay. The more the, the, the more the better. Khananya says, you are allowed, you can put, you know, even a higher level restraint on an animal. Okay, almost done here. Levi Bere de Rabhuna Barhiya. Beraba bar Rabhuna Avukazle Biurha. Okay, these, uh, these two rabbis were walking on the road. This is a fun story. Levi's, uh, Levi's donkey started going ahead. Uh, Rabba got insulted because he was the greater sage. And now Levi is pulling, pulling ahead in front of him as if he's greater. So he felt slighted. Okay, this is like the opposite story of the one before where the each rabbi gave was deferred to each other. Um, so what's he going to do? He can't just say, you know, hey, I'm greater than you, I'm going to go away. He's going to say it in a tactful way. Amal emale milta Sorry, an opposite. Levi said, I, I realized that I'm ahead and he felt bad about it. Let me say something to pacify him. Amale, you see, you don't want to say I'm sorry because then you're implying that the other person is upset about it and you you know okay so he does it very tactfully he says he says if i have a donkey that's wild and 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 it can't, it can't be controlled 
Am I allowed to put a halter on the donkey, which is more than a donkey usually needs? It's very expensive, right? And take it out on Shabbat. In other words, by asking the question in that way and asking like this, like my donkey, is admitting that he's not in control of his donkey. It went ahead. It was not on purpose, right? It's not my fault. I wasn't trying to show you up. He says, in fact, your own father uh, said that the halacha is like Hananya. That's the statement right here. Um, right, this is Levi, the son of Rav Huna Bar And here, look at this. Rav Huna Bar is the one that said, name of Shemuel, the halacha is kechananya. So obviously, Levi knew this law. His own father had said it. Right, but he's asking it uh, to make a... Uh, Baba um, feel better, and it works, and he does, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks so much. Um, today was a wonderful, wonderful day of learning. Day flew by. Yeah, yeah, it was really yeah. nice. You heard some, some good classes.